As always, let us explain that each Walmart FLW Tour event starts with 300 anglers, 150 pros, 150 amateurs or non-boaters. Now, after two days of qualifying, there are 10 left on each side, and on day three, the pros fight for the top five positions, allowing them to fish for the championship on day four, and the amateurs find out who's the champ. And at this particular event on Beaver Lake, Bentonville, Arkansas, that amateur champ will collect $20,000 in the back. Pro Gerald Swindle's boat there is Chris Rand, who along with nine other amateurs have done their best all day long. Help, help me. Amen. Woo! Yes. In this event, you always see the pros in the front, and they always have complete That's control of the boat. So boy. normally, the I amateur or non-boater's catch is somewhat out. light, but it is equal yeah. for all 10 non-boaters. And Chris Rand here, well, maybe he's he snuck one in on the field. Yes! That's the one I've been looking for. Well, at weigh-in time, Come Chris out, Rand will have to sweat it out on this third and final day for the non-boaters. He has outweighed eight I'll other anglers. Will the last fish be big enough? Charlie Evans talks him through the final angler to weigh in. I, I know now we're down to one angler. This is the guy I'm worried about. This is the guy, this, this is the guy that's really got you concerned. All right, your weight is how much? Six pounds, seven ounces. Six pounds, seven ounces. So he's got to have six, eight to knock you out of the champions. I'm worried. I Are know, you worried? I, I know what he's got. You know, all right, well, I don't have any idea, but if you know what he's got, I want you to get over here where you can see these scales really, really close. So let's bring him up here. The one guy that can win from Tyler, Texas, Robert Pirtle. Come on up, Bob. Again, being the last guy to weigh in, you don't have to worry about what the guys in back of you've got because there's nobody in back of you. All you got to worry about is what Chris has got. He's got six pounds, seven ounces. Uh, one of you is going to win $20,000. Do you have enough? I really don't know. Do you know? You don't know? You don't know? The only one way to find out. Let's... My, pro, my pro says I do. Well, he don't have the scales. We've got the scales here. Let's, <laughs> let's pull them out of there. How many do you have? Five. And what would you catch them on? Spinnerbait. Five fish caught on a spinnerbait. And let's watch the scales really closely here, Chris. You need to watch the scales real close. Pull them out of there. There's number one. That's a real small fish. That's less than a pound there. Here comes. He's... There's number two. That's a little bit better fish there. We've got two fish that pound. This is going to be close. Here's fish number three. You're going to have to pick up here. You're still less than three pounds with two fish to go. Here's number four. One, two, three, four. We're in the four-pound range. We need a two-eight to win $20,000. Pull him up there. Let's have a look at him. Oh, man, this is going to be close. This, this, hold him up there where we can see him there. This is, this is really close. Oh, boy, this is too close to call. This is, this is, what do you think? Hurry up, they're drying out. All right, hurry up. Let's put him in there. Six, eight wins, six, seven ties, six, six takes him. Second place, and let's check the weight. And the weight, six pounds, five ounces, air weight. I knew he had five fish in the bag. I did, just didn't know how much he had. And, oh, man, I saw that fish come out of the bag. I about died. I knew it was going to be so close. Thank God. All I can say is thank God. Oh, yeah, we have five pros for the finals now who will have to hurry to beat that non-boater excitement we just witnessed there. Fishing a lot of clear water and using 30-pound test line and this jig, and you wouldn't think that uh, a finicky fish would, would bite a lure like that in crystal clear water, but uh, they're seem, you know, they seem to be biting it. 
And when the water's in the mid-40s, uh, you have to fish extremely slow, try to cover some water. The fish are going to be active if it's windy, cloudy. Uh, if you uh, have a bluebird day that uh, uh, the lake's all slicked off, then you've got to get in the cover. But uh, if the lake's not slicked off, uh, then you're going to be able to go after some, some active fish. I take the skirts off and I go to the old rubber skirt. That's an old rubber skirt versus the new skirts that are out today with the fluorescence and the, the, everything that you can find on it. And it might be that that's what I've been fishing for 25 years. But I like it because I can actually feel the bait slow down. It's a big, nasty jig. I'm using a three-quarter ounce to get through the mat a lot quicker. I'm letting that jig fall through the mat, letting it go to the bottom. And I'm hopping the bait real hard. You see a lot of guys just real easing up on it. I'm hopping that bait like a crawl. 90% of the time, I'm throwing a War Eagle spinnerbait, but it's a little different than everybody else because I'm throwing a number five Colorado in the front and a number seven Willow Leaf in the back. And I'm trailing it with an Eagle Claw trailer hook, which is rigged on different. I've pinched my trailer hooks on with no plastic, no nothing. The hook can never come off, but it always runs in line with my bait. It never gets hung up, down, or around. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices, always Walmart. By Evinrude Intruder 150 with thick fuel injection. By Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. And by Land O'Lakes, the good things in life never really change. Well, welcome to the heart of the heartland, the old town square here in Bentonville, Arkansas. I'm Tommy Sanders along with Jerry McInnes and the first, the very first Walmart Open. And where should we be to do the very <laughs> first Walmart Open? Right here. Right here, behind us, Tommy. The very first Walmart store. Yeah, that's right. That is the Walton's Five and Dime. Opened their doors way back in 1950. A lot of history going on a right here. A lot of history. A lot of history on this lake we're fishing yes. today. Beaver Lake and some very famous tournaments through the past. A very famous chain of lakes it's a part of. Starts with Bull Shoals, comes up to Tabor Rock, Tanacoma, on into Beaver Lake. Normally clear water fishing. We got a little bit of murkier water going on at this time, but you're right. This, this is a famous chain of lakes and when those doors opened, other than Bull Shoals, those lakes weren't even here. <laughs> it's amazing, the empire that's grown from the humble beginnings here, and somewhere there's an humble fisherman yep. out there who's trying to jumpstart a big empire, and with a $150,000 first prize, they'll have a pretty good shot at it. This is one to watch. The very first Walmart open, stay with us. Boy, this is exciting. I wish I'd have slept some last night. <laughs> out of all. I'd have probably done a lot better than I'm going to do today. <laughs> Beaver Lake, it's right in the Arkansas Ozarks. And we're hoping, of course, all our anglers today can not only produce some good fish, but uh, show us some of this incredible April scenery that places like Dwayne Horton's visiting today. Dwayne's on the, the waterfall pattern, isn't he? Ooh, pretty. <laughs> that is beautiful. Uh, the whole lake is really a, a spectacular lake, and we're watching Jerry Williams, who is is not fished beaver a whole lot, although he's right down the road uh, at Conway, Arkansas, and uh, Jerry is a, a real veteran of tournament angling, uh, is fishing both crankbaits and jigs, oh. and I believe he's up War Eagle Creek right now. It's supposed to be. Whoa. This one could possibly be. I mean, when you're lucky, you're lucky. That fish is hooked in, hooked in the gill. <laughs> but I'll take him. I wouldn't sight fish him. Yeah, that's a keeper. This has been my bread and butter this week to get a in it and I'll get down about uh, 12 to 14 feet. And that's where I've been catching my Kentucky bass to get a limit. They're down off the rock point, and it's not an obvious rock point, but if you'll find a shelf and, and a, just a little indention out, they're suspended off that. You don't want to hit that. You want to come off of that about 12 feet. I mean, hit it like you hadn't had anything to eat in a month. Okay, so what does that tell me? Tells me I've thrown a jig about 1,652 times. Son of a gun. And had another one. There ought to be another one on this side for sure. This is one of the best columns on it. 
from the soft spoken Jerry Williams, we go to Highway 12 Bridge and Gerald Swindle. Snap me out of two pound spot right here. Things will be looking up for the home team. And Gerald has been fishing these bridge piers almost every day, trying to get a few spotted uh, Kentucky bass, and these little spots really, really pay off. These guys are trying to catch a limit, and the largemouth aren't hitting that good, so the so the spotted bass are very important to them. Yes. Hadn't helped. Second fish, so Gerald Swindle starts his morning off with two fish from the bridge pier here. Mike Watson has a different approach. He's flipping in the back end of almost clogged up pockets, and this pattern has taken him a long way in a short time this week. Yeah, and this debris is uh, only on the surface. We'll explain that a little later. But right now, we're very intrigued with the story that Mike told us earlier in the week about the Indian that told him he was going to win this event you heard that story what watson said yesterday about this old indian told him that he was he felt a big spirit around him he was going to win this tournament if he'd done two things did he go get two what was it he said two eight inch cedar lamps put one in his bed and one in his boat and he'd win I was supposed to put a fresh one in here. I looked all around the motel last night. There weren't any cedar trees around there. So the first thing I done this morning is stopped and got me a new cedar bush. He's doing pretty good. He's caught. He's in second place. And he, he, he's got a real good chance of winning it. Mike Watson has been near or at the top every day. And we're, uh, we're hoping that his Native American advisor knew that this was a four day event. But I'm thinking about going up here and chopping me a whole tree down and putting it in here. <laughs> Probably arrest me for chopping down cedar trees. There we go. Well, we're all over that spooky Watson story, and we also promised to follow Dwayne Horton to jail if that should occur. But right now, let's check in on the most famous angler from Lawrence, Kansas, Cecil Kingsley. Hey, I don't think they'll really put Horton in jail, will they? No. <laughs> they'll let him fish. They'll let him fish the last day. Oh, surely they will. Hey, Cecil's fishing a, a suspended jerk bait. He's uh, throwing a thunder stick and a, and a rogue most of the time. Matter of fact, we've seen a handful of really interesting patterns so far. Jerry Williams is fishing two patterns. You know, the game plan tomorrow for me is to go out there, slow presentation, and catch five big ones. I'd like to win more than anything. It would mean a lot to me being from Arkansas and winning a tournament on Beaver Lake. Dwayne Horton is on a definite pattern. You just go to the most beautiful places on the lake and fish them. And I think it's kind of interesting. He's been telling us all week long, I think he probably told you the same thing, that he's not on any fish. Oh, no. No, <laughs> and he's not going to catch any fish tomorrow. And you don't know how he caught them today. And every day he has ended up with a real good string of fish. And, and again, I want to say that the majority of fish are um, uh, small Kentucky bass, but they're trying to catch themselves one good largemouth or two or maybe three to go in the mix. Now, if I was a fish, I would live right there. Dwayne, as we've said in the past, has not been flipping for a long time, about 10 years. I think he learned it originally from... Steve Daniels, but he is very, very good at it. And every time I see him fishing, he's always using a, a pretty heavy jig, and he trails his jig with a plastic frog chunk. He would have been in it. Well, there he is. Spotted bass. Keeper. All right. Pretty spot. Man, ain't that a pretty little old fish? About time, ain't it? Can you believe that caught him out of a waterfall? Now, this Mike Watson technique looks kind of nasty, but this is just pine needles and leaves and a few pieces of styrofoam off of boat docks that have floated up on top. It's real clean and clear underneath. You have to remember the lake's really up, and 
everything on the bank kind of floated up with it. I don't believe you'll make it, though. So, I do. Oh no, fourteen inch. Fourteen inch. Well, Jerry, because of the difference in the length limits between the two species here, a keeper largemouth is a lot more valuable than a keeper Kentucky bass. Right, and a largemouth must be fifteen inches, and a spotted bass must be twelve inches. Mike's in a wrestling match right now, isn't he? <laughs> I think he's got him a large mouth. And this is a fish. If he gets him in the boat, put him in there, Mike. That, oh. was, that was not going to have to be measured. No. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Lucky, folks. That's about a sorry job lifting a fish as you've ever seen. This lake's got some beautiful fish in it. I've been fooled on these fish this week, cats. Fish pretty close to six pounds. If I get five of them to bite, four more of them, this whole country boy take a lot of money home. My little wife will be tickled to death. The problem with these fish biting real good today, so is those spinnerbait fish. Uh, the one that I'm, person fishing this tournament I'm probably most concerned with, uh, having a big stringer today, is Gerald Swindell. But when fishing is tough like this, and you're having to try to catch a 15 inch, you have to do right opposite of what your competitor is doing. Don't fish for as many bites. Focus, be stronger mentally, fish for fewer bites with bigger baits and hope you, you know, are successful in getting a 15 inch to bite. There he is. That's a big one. God, that's a big one. Yes! A little swap another bait, a little change another guard, baby. Whew. That took some pressure off. Uh, what? Well, I'll go ahead and retie. I'll explain to you what what our situation is in boat four. Uh, we just started on a bank about 35, 40 minutes ago. We started working around it. And I was throwing a big three-quarter ounce War Eagle spinnerbait with a number seven wheel in the back and a number five white wheel in the front. And I've had two, three short strikes on a chartreuse blade of War Eagle spinnerbait and two short strikes on a three-quarter ounce with my number seven blade, which I caught the majority of my fish on during the tournament so far. And I just come to a lock and I missed a fish. And I got down in a box and I, and I tied on a half ounce with smaller blades, give me a different image in the water, I turned the boat right around, I throwed right back in there, and I caught a three-pound fish. So maybe we've made the right decision. We don't know, but it sure does look better for the home team. But now we've got to back up around ourselves where we got strikes and missed strikes and fishes on the wood. That's three different bites around wood. All right, boys, the party is started. We're still going to target these corner bushes because I have had a strike or two around them. But we're going to keep our eye around them logs. And it seems like a big log laying up against a bush is double trouble. Ah, shoot. I mean, shucks. Hi, <laughs> right, Claire. Those old spots just ain't want to take it. We continue from scenic Beaver Lake near Bentonville, Arkansas, and our uh, scenery tour director and pro angler, Dwayne Horton, up on Clifty Creek. Beautiful place. Woo-wee, that makes me so nervous I can't hardly fish. 
Well, he's always happy, Dwayne Horton. He's had himself a good start today, oh, and he's I'll right back on the man. place here where he caught a good fish yesterday. Matter of fact, Tommy, every place Dwayne Horton fished today could have been our Fuji flashback. This particular one happens to be my favorite. A fish. Oh, gosh. Oh. <clears throat> Woo! <laughs> Woo-wee! Huh, nice. Mmm, like that. Let's go find another pretty spot. I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna just, <clears throat> I'm gonna just go around looking for places that I'd live. I'm trying something a little bit different right here. I've been pushing in on top of these pockets. That big fish bit right on the edge of it. You gotta really pay attention to what you're doing out here, where the fish bite you at. A lot of times, that one little adjustment make the difference. I'm gonna try to move through all the water that I've had fish in this week today. That may be a mistake. That is, unless I get in some place that I'm getting bit real good. Maybe that same old uh, Indian that give Mike Watson that, that uh, thing about the two cedar limbs. Maybe he would tell me something right there. Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> What about that? <laughs> hey, the, uh, the, uh, that Watson's fish god is working with me. Told me to get on a cedar tree. If you look at these trees right here, see that big water line on them? Most of that was here before we made any waves in here. They dropped it, they told me yesterday, I hadn't paid a whole lot of attention to it, but they told me they had dropped it uh, about a foot. I just need to get in a pocket or two that's got some new fish in them, or expand on. Oh. Expand on what I'm doing. Thank you, Lord. It's the right size. <laughs> One of the the unique things about this bait, it's a big, nasty jig. And I'm hopping the bait real hard. You see a lot of guys just real easing up on it. I'm hopping that bait like a crawl. There you go. You've ever seen a crawl when, when something's after it, it, it really jumps off the bottom. I'm doing it without a rattle, and I'm really banging that jig around down there. <laughs> I've been pretty close to a four pound average this week. If I can get to five bites, I can get up for around 15 to 20 pounds. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Them guys swing off that cliff right there. They're braver than I am. Look at that. Can you imagine swinging off that cliff on that, on that rope? The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Enjoy. By Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. By Fuji Film, you can see the future from here. And by Sitco, when it counts. Well, as we watch Jerry Williams approach this point and prepare to fish them, we take a look at the standings right now. Mike Watson out in first place at this time with 11 pounds. Dwayne Horton fishing a completely different pattern. He's in second, followed by Swindle, Kingsley, and Jerry Williams. 
And Jerry hasn't fished War Eagle for a couple of days now. I believe it was bat Tuesday or Wednesday. We had a real downpour. And, oh, man, the, the creeks, these main creeks, especially got real high and muddy. And uh, he thought it might take a couple of days before he, he could come back in, before it began to straighten up. Do and like you know, he might be right. And he could catch 8 or 10 pounds of fish in a hurry back in this new spot. We're down to five guys fishing for the yeah. championship, down from the 150 who started. So that means there's a lot of guys who were eliminated. Some of them stick around, do seminars. Others go to junior mm. high schools and mm. high schools and talk to the kids about fishing as a career. Thank you. Wow, it's nice to see such a healthy group out here. I bet you'd all rather be fishing in outdoors, though, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And not only just in professional fishing, but in any career you pursue, you need to have the roundness of an education. You need that exposure to help you enhance any career you may choose. I had to pursue my education to get where I got what I'm doing now. The fishing has gotten so large now, if you want to be a professional fisherman, there's so much of it that is not fishing in, involved for business that you need that education for marketing to help you there. You need to understand the promotions of it. For speaking, you need to understand the marketing of it. You need to understand the business of fishing. It all comes into play. You need to understand where your sponsors are coming from because these sponsors get bombarded with resumes from people daily. And that's where the education comes in. I probably sound like your parents sitting up here, and it might be a reason for that because I've got a daughter about y'all the same age. I have 18-year-old and 13-year-old, both daughters. And it's a really good time to start thinking about it because this is the last year before they go into high school and their classes that they take start counting toward graduation. If you go to college and get a degree... If they're wanting something that's going to involve a lot of science, they need to make sure that they have those science classes to back up whatever career they're going into. I don't care what it's in. That's something that's yours to keep forever. You can't wait until your senior year and then decide, oh, I guess I'll go to college, but I don't have the requirements that I need. you got to have a good education to pursue any career goal that you might set right now. So it really is important. They don't make definite decisions, but they do start thinking about what they enjoy doing, what they like to do, and then what kind of careers might help them pursue those things. I mean, you know, so many things you can pursue and you can attain material things, and that can be taken away from you, but your education you'll have forever. No matter what, you're going to have it. Questions? Okay. Yes, sir. First question they want to know. What's your favorite bait? <laughs> what's your favorite lure? How big a fish did you catch? You know, Because a lot of folks are just now joining us and picking up on the tournament here. Tell us what happened to you on the road coming to this tournament. Well, I, I just got in my van. I've been driving, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. And I've got a CB radio in the truck just because you get so bored driving around the country by yourself. Uh, I've been driving a few minutes there, and I talked to, uh, I was talking to a gentleman by the name of Roger Bear. I hope I don't insult him by telling the wrong tribe. He was a full-blooded Cheyenne Indian. Uh, we were talking about fishing, hadn't been talking very long, and he knew I was going to a tournament, but he didn't really have a clue, you know, how big a tournament I was going to. Just out of the blue, he said, uh, I feel a great spirit with you. He said, you're going to win this tournament you're going to. <laughs> he said, but you got to do two things for me. He said, you've got to uh, cut an eight-inch long cedar limb, put one in the boat, one in the van. Uh, I, I've had those all week, but uh, last night when I left the boat in the parking lot, the, the ranger guys that were nice enough to clean up my boat, which was full of limbs. They just thought it was another limb and they took it out. The first stop I made this morning was to get me another cedar limb. All right. <laughs> what an experience he's had started before he even got here. Yeah, isn't that something? And, and uh, I'm, we're, we're so anxious. But I want to know what everyone's going to do. If he wins this, is everyone going to go out and start cutting those uh, uh, limbs down? I, I wouldn't or? be surprised if they did. <laughs> I'm not gonna have one come up one of these bushes right out here yesterday that hit it. There's one I'm eating for. Come to baby. Come to daddy. Woo! Yes! Double pin, eagle claw trailer hook, top and bottom mouth, wired shut, boys. Yes! Son, he's got a shad in his mouth. Don't you spit him up, boy. He's got a gizzard, Shad's a quarter of a pound. Yes, yeah. 
Uh, Lord's taking care of me, boys. It's been a long week for me. Y'all just don't know the story before I left home. Whew. My family hit some serious tragedy the day I left. Whew. Gerald Swindle, first time in the top ten out here on the Walmart FLW Tour. Now first time in the top five, and the, the momentum just keeps going there, Gerald. Uh, you got to feel pretty good about things right now. Uh, it feels great just to make it. Just to be here is, is such a high to be a part of this and, and to make the cut. So, yes, indeed, sir, I do feel great today. Well, now the adrenaline, are you using it to your advantage? Are you having any trouble focusing with all the, the thought of $150,000 in the back of your mind and what all these other guys are doing? Are you keeping your focus good the way you wanted to? Yes, sir, I think I'm staying pretty focused uh, the best I can. $150,000 is in the back of my mind, but I come out with a set of goals today just to catch five fish, just like it's a $50 tournament. and. Uh, you know, let, let the rest take care of itself. So I'm pretty uh, pretty satisfied with my performance about staying focused. What What is your style of fishing today? Tell well, us a little bit about it. I've spent everybody through the whole tournament. And uh, today I, I'm still just fishing outside bushes. I've been fishing more points than I have today, but I figured out a little something about two to three hours ago that seems to be working. I've changed up since it started getting cold through yesterday. Uh, the people that was at the weigh-in really experienced the cold front moving in and so did the fish, and I found that more so today, the fish have moved back on wood that's mixed in with the bushes, so I'm just taking a spinnerbait and just running right down the sides of big logs that's blowed in on the bushes, and seeing that seems to be where the bigger fish have keyed in at today, because I've caught two good keepers off of it, and I've lost two pretty good quality fish off of it, and on a lake like this, as tough as it is, that's a pretty good pattern. Gerald, we talked a little bit about this yesterday at the weigh-in. Uh, your buddy, Marty Stone, who made our top five last time at Huntsville, Alabama, was keenly interested in how you are doing before he had to head on out. And you, you sort of indicated that the two of you had a partnership. You really helped each other out on the tour. I don't know if everyone does that, but how does a, a partnership between two competitors work out? Well, i tell you what it's built on. It's built on a lot of trust and friendship. There's many good fishermen out here, and we've been trying to do it single-handedly if we just put our minds together and shared and not just... Not get jealous. When one of you starts winning and you're sharing information, it's very easy for the other one to get jealous because of his success. But I think Marty and myself have really had a heart-to-heart -heart about that. And uh, I believe it's, as a partnership, just sharing, you got to trust one another totally, and you got to bend over backwards for them every chance you get. Because when you stay in a room with somebody for three or four weeks at a time, it's almost like being married to them. And I don't think I'd want to marry Marty, but he's a pretty nice guy. <laughs> you know, that nice guy. All right, we, we appreciate you sharing that with us. Gerald Swindle out there doing good today, and uh, that's kind of interesting. I'd like to see them both get in the final five sometime. We can see how, yeah, how well there, those we principles check stand that up. Out, you know. We'll check here. Uh, that's right. We'll and, I, and I know that you, the trust you and I have with each other is not that great, because I hope <laughs> I do better than you do. I, I'm always hoping to beat you, so... <laughs> There he is. God. My damn winning fish right there, boys. Man. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. Whew. Come on, son. Whew. That was him. Now I got to buckle down, boys. I got to buckle down. I knew there was going to be a fish right in there. How much money are they paying you? <laughs> Walk around up there with all them snakes. <laughs> uh, I forgot about the snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> You gotta bite it. I can't do anything if they don't bite it. Obviously today, I haven't been able to do much when they do bite it. There he is. Cecil Kingsley was having a pretty tough day, but uh, we have to remember, Jerry, that just making the final five against the best anglers in the world always an achievement. Well, I hope everybody remembers that. Cecil is really hanging in there fishing open water. The only fisherman in open water, he's really hanging in there with his jerk baits. It's important that uh, when you fish this lure, 
uh, any of them, the bait has to, has to suspend. It can't rise in the water. Ooh, this is a tight race. Dwayne Horton here is right in the thick of it. Big difference between first and second place. $150,000 for first, $50,000 for second place. Then we go to $30,000, $25,000, and $20,000 for the final three places in the top five. And we're finally getting a good look at uh, Dwayne Horton flipping. Boy, he is good at it. I gone, I can't believe that. Another one. Ah, man. <laughs> Just touching it, letting it go. Hey, I had three bites right down through there, and every one of them turned it loose. That one there hit it. Whew, that one there hit it, and it come back and got it. Golly. Whew. Low down hard. Oh, man. Did you see that? That, that was three bass, and I guarantee you, every one of them was the same size. This made me so nervous, because I got I to gotta go back and do that again. Man. Well, Dwayne Horton swore that if he won this thing today, he was going to go back and buy one of those waterfalls. And boy, who could blame him? Wouldn't you like to own a place like that? He may have the money to do it, too, Tony. <laughs> he, could have, he could have the fish to back it up. Swindell has uh, kind of left his sp spinnerbait fish, I, and he hasn't really left them. He's kind of on his way back to the boat dock now, I believe. Boy, what he needs is just one more really good fish in uh, kind of following Mike Watson's uh, routine here of going in the back end of one of these just almost nasty covered <laughs> pockets. Well, if Mike Watson's any indication, he's in the right place. Nah, and I do want to say again that it is nice and clear underneath that mat of uh, leaves and pine needles. Stay on, baby. Stay on, baby. Yes! Come on, boys. Woo! Thank you, Lord. I love it, man. I love this sport. I'm telling you, I love it, guys. Yes. I see it right there, guys. All right. That's us, baby. That's us. All right. Woo! Let's head back to Bentonville, Arkansas, find out whether Gerald Swindle's last fish was important. Yeah, that young man needs a ranger hat. He, you, you know he's going to be a ranger owner. Well, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, son. We'll Thanks see you. Catch one. <laughs> I think I'll finish about third. But it won't be because I didn't try. Give them everything I had. Well, for Gerald Swindle, Mike Watson, Dwayne Horton, Jerry Williams, and Cecil Kingsley, the moment of truth is just up the road. We're headed to the Walmart Super Center in Bentonville, actually just across the street from Walmart headquarters there. And that's where we're about to have the weigh in and see who is the first champion of the Walmart Open. Don't go anywhere. It's coming up next. Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks. By Everstart, the name says it all. By Mitchell, we know the water. And by Igloo, it's for keeps. Dwayne, well, everyone Horton loves our unique one fish at a time weigh-in and. We've already eliminated Cecil Kingsley and Jerry Williams, and uh, Tommy and Charlie Evans will take it from here. There's no way he'd make it into the top ten here. No way he'd make it from the top ten to the top five. He's weighed in one fish so far. 
Needs 5-12 right now to stay in it. He needs what, Tommy? 5-12. We need one more. Looking for 5-12 to stay in this thing. 5-12 to take the lead. Three fish. Six pounds, 11 ounces. Six pounds, 11 ounces. Four fish weighed now. Keep that in mind. Dwayne Horton has weighed in four fish. And now, Mike Watson, you must have three pounds and 12, three pounds, 13, excuse me, ounces to stay in the game here. Looking for 313. One fish. Six pounds even. Six, Six pounds even. even. Sit it down, Mike Watson. All right, we're down to four, Gerald Swindell. You need four pounds in order to take the lead, Gerald. All right, that could do it. Two fish, six pounds, 12 ounces. It's a limit of fish, Gerald. Take a seat. We'll get right back around to you. We're down to three right now, and it's back around to Dwayne Horton, who needs five pounds and two ounces. Dwayne, five pounds, two ounces. Our leader now, Gerald Swindell, with 12 pounds, 15 ounces, but it's got to be 5-2 for Dwayne Horton. Woo! Three pounds, 14 ounces. Well, Dwayne, let's have a big hand for Dwayne Horton right here. Not too bad, not too bad for a guy that told us, just protested all week long, said there's no way I'm gonna catch any fish on Beaver Lake. When you got in the top 10, you said there was no way I was gonna get in the final five. Pretty good week, considering all that. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, it's been a fantastic week. I, I wasn't expect, I, I, when the tournament started, I was, um, I'd have been tickled to, to just make my entry fee back, <laughs> you know. <laughs> today, there was a little bit slower, but I, I still, uh, you know, if, if you know, I, I think I'm lowest I can get, maybe third. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> I'll take it. That ain't bad. <laughs> One more big hand for Dwayne Horton. <laughs> Have a seat back in the boat if you would, Dwayne. <laughs> Gerald Swindell. Weighed in a limit of fish. Mike Watson has weighed in four fish. If they're going to shoot for $150,000, I think we ought to make them squirm just a little bit more. So what we always do at these FLW Tour events is take a break. Right. There they sit, right there, Mike Watson. Gerald Swindle has weighed in a full limit of fish. Mike Watson has weighed in two fish so far. Gerald Swindle is our leader with 12 pounds, 15 ounces. Mike Watson has got a possible three fish to make two pounds, 14 ounces, and win the tournament, the $150,000. Mike Watson, let's see what you got. Gerald, come on up here. Come on. We're all gonna sit and get real close and watch this right now. It's gotta be two pounds, 14 ounces. in just a minute. Let's get our winner out here. Your champion. time to talk but if we had any man up here we know he can talk and express himself right now it's you Gerald Swindle the winner of the very first Walmart open $150,000 and it just all melts away and it's just a wonderful world right now isn't it yes sir it is <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it together guys I tell you I left home Friday morning 
My family's got a lot of problems. <laughs> You've been tested, you've come through it now. You're a man who's standing on the threshold of the future of fishing. You're a young man with right now the hottest pro career going. I want you to look into the future and tell, it what it looks, tell us what it looks like for all young men out there, the new wave of fishing. I tell you what, for the younger generation, you just don't know what you got before you. I'm 28 years old. I'm young, but I'm on my way out. You guys that are 15, 16, 18 years old, these people right here is fixing to do something in fishing that's never, ever been heard of. God knows they've got it on the right foot, I'm telling you, man. You stay focused, you stay out of drugs, you keep your nose clean, listen to your parents, live a good life. These people right in here are going to put a future out here for bass fishing. So y'all All right. Mike, oh, man. It's been, a, it's been a wonderful week for you, hasn't it? I'm sorry you couldn't have the championship, but you, you wouldn't give anything for this week, would you? Oh, no, sir. I, I told them today when I, I had a couple of fish and the, I really started uh, struggling, getting nervous, getting excited. And I said, hey, I said, I'm going to calm down here. I said, I'm living my dream right now today. I said, I'm having a ball out here. I said, wherever I finish, the Lord has blessed me this week. I've had a good tournament. I'm going to win more money today than I've ever won in my life. Uh, hey, I'm tickled to death to be here. Uh, I want to thank my wife and my daughter again. You all have, folks, if, without your family, None of this means anything. Gerald, on behalf of uh, Walmart and all the other great sponsors of the Walmart FLW Tour, it's my pleasure today to present you with the first place of $150,000.